is Skyrim, my homeland, the place I've always defended. And I don't know why my accent is British right now. I don't think I'm British in the game. I've bravely fought against some of the worst monsters imaginable in hopes of protecting my homeland and one day possibly restoring the peace. Even dragons, the dreaded monster that everybody fears, have fallen before me. For I am the Dragonborn. I am Dover King. Now you're telling me I can't steal a sweet roll? Demacia! Hey you guys, so it's that time of year once again. Christmas is upon us, and what does that mean for you? That means this video isn't going to change at all other than the fact that I'm wearing this hat. Nah, but in all seriousness, you know, I, I, I do try to work a little bit harder on my Christmas reviews, make them a little bit more detailed, better effects, longer, you know, just generally better. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that this year, because this is the first review I've made in a while, and I'm kind of slow at it, not only that, but I did get a really late start on this review, but I'll try not to disappoint you guys. So this year, the game we're reviewing for Christmas is The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim. Now, I've been playing this game ever since it came out, give or take, you know, a day or two. I actually bought the Collector's Edition, pre-ordered it, you know, um, once again, pre-ordered it the day it was available for pre-order. I've been looking forward to this game for a long time, and right here, I just want to give a huge shout-out to my cousin Connor, who without him, I wouldn't have been able to get this game at all, and you guys wouldn't be watching this terrible video. And, uh, one more thing, if you guys didn't notice, you know, for the first time in a long time... I'm wearing a pin. I mean, like, I never wear pins because, like, you know, they're, they're pointy. You know, I don't, I don't like pointy stuff, and they do put holes in your shirt and stuff, so I never really do that very often. But, uh, you know, if you notice, yeah, I'm, I'm wearing a pin for the first time in a while. Now, over the years, graphics for games have been getting better and better. And graphics are definitely a deciding factor when you're choosing whether or not you want to buy a game that just came out. And let me tell you that Skyrim does not disappoint. Now... Just to keep in mind, the graphics that you're seeing right now are actually what I recorded on low settings. This computer can handle more than that, but to record gameplay and to have optimal smoothness, you're going to want to play on low. And I think it's kind of crazy that even on low, you can see mountains in the distance with mist swirling around the top of them, you can see details in the ground and rocks, and even the monsters that you're fighting. Now speaking of graphics, I think this game's graphics shine the most when you're casting a spell, because you can see such detail in the element that you're casting. There's plenty of different spells. You've got ice, you've got fire, conjuration, and even restoration spells just look awesome. So let me give you guys an example. Right now I have a spell called Firestorm Equipped. This is a spell when you get to the master level of destruction spells. Now, even as he's channeling it, it's almost like you can feel the heat of the fire coming off of the... Okay. Now in this game, your combat system basically revolves around one thing. Having one thing in your left hand, and one thing in your right hand. Now with magic, you can also have the same spell in both your left and right hand, and use them both at the same time for a better effect. For example, left hand, right hand, and then when you use both. Now you can also choose in the melee system to have one weapon in each hand, or of course, a weapon and a shield. Now I don't think I can emphasize this enough, but I absolutely love the leveling system in this game. Now this is what your skill tree looks like. As you can see there are tons and tons of skills to level up. Now a lot of people have been complaining about how it's a little bit too easy to level up in this game. Well I guarantee you, you try to get every single one of these skills to 100, it's gonna take you a while. And by the time you're done, I think you will have at least gotten 100 hours of gameplay out of this game. 
Then, I want to hear you complain. Now every time you level up, you're given a skill point. You can use those skill points on certain kind of skills to increase their effects. For example, if you use it on destruction magic, you can do more damage with certain spells, make spells cost less to cast, and etc. Not only that, but every time you level up, you can choose to increase one of your skills, your stamina, your health, or your magicka. However, you can't do this every time you level up each individual skill. You have to level up multiple skills in order to level up your entire combat level. Then you're able to increase one of these three things. So by that logic, yes, it is true. You can actually get to a high health level, a high stamina level, and a high magic level without even getting into combat. Just level up stuff like smithing, lockpicking, things like that. Now that might sound weird, but as I said before, I simply love the level system in this game. And if you played it, you would know what I meant. Now if you guys are wondering why I'm not talking about the story of Skyrim, it's because I don't want to spoil this game with, you know, any details about the story that you might not have seen yet if you didn't get the game yet. Now, I'm hoping some people with their Christmas money that haven't played this game yet, after watching this review, will go out and buy it. But, for those of you who want to call me lazy for not telling you about the story, I'll do that right now. Now, the game starts out with your character on a carriage with a couple other prisoners on your way to be killed. The prisoners that you're with are known as Stormcloaks. The people of Skyrim that are actually kind of starting a revolution within Skyrim. Now, although you're not a Stormcloak, and the executors know this, they decide to execute you anyway. So, as you're getting ready, stepping up to the plate, you know, the executionist is getting his axe ready, you're actually interrupted by a dragon, which stops you from getting executed. Now, seeing a dragon is not very common, because apparently, dragons were thought to be dead for a very long time, and nobody even thought they existed. You later find out that your character is called the Dragonborn. You have the ability to absorb dragons' souls and use their voice in combat. Now, despite what most people think, dragons don't actually breathe fire. When dragons fight, they're actually just having debates. Now, your character, Dovakin, has the ability to learn and use their voice in combat. He's also the only one who can actually kill these dragons and absorb their souls to make sure that they're permanently dead. Now, that's the only part of the story I'm going to tell you about. Now, I honestly didn't really need to go into the story of this game because the story is what you make it. There's no real spoiling it, I'm not going to tell you the ending or anything like that, but you could choose to join the Stormcloaks, the Imperials, you could be rogue and just kill everything you see, and there's so many side quests and so many things to see and do in this game that you're really probably just going to get hundreds and hundreds of hours of happy gameplay out of it. Now whether it's fighting dragons or just questing along the map, Skyrim is definitely a game to have in your collection. It's definitely different than some of the games that have been coming out lately like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and Battlefield. And it does not disappoint. If you so choose, you will get hundreds of hours of breathtaking gameplay out of this amazing game. This feels like it is a world that was there long before you entered it and is going to be there long after you leave.